Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inshallah, today we're going to do something exciting. Uh, one of the brothers sent me a video and then it, it got my mind moving in a certain direction. So what we're going to do exciting is we're actually going to look at the maps today and talk about the locations where the Prophet mentioned the Jal will come out from and compare that with the um, the uh, the what will happen with Malhama and these different areas that the Prophet talks about, that the Dajjal will come out from Khurasan, that the Dajjal will, his army will be in Asfahan. So we're going to look at Asfahan in, 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 you know, on a map. And we're going to look at Khurasan at a map. And then we know the positive role. The Prophet talked about يَخْرُجُنَا مِنَ الْخُرَسَانِ رَعْيَةِ Sud That the black flags will come out of Khurasan. So we're going to look at these sayings of the Prophet ﷺ that are authentic about the location of the Dajjal, about him being in Iraq, and about him coming out from the east. And we're going to compare, we're going to look at that and analyze that. And that will probably give us a better view of what is going to happen in the future. Now, no one knows the future except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the future in its exactness. But the Prophet gave us this information so that we may confirm for the people in Akhirul Zaman or people in Akhirul Akhirul Zaman that we may confirm that He is the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to have doubts despite the difficulties and the trials and all of that, number one. Number two, so that we may be able to protect our Iman and not only that, we know in which direction to go. We know where to go to 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 be with the jama'ah, with with the jama'ah of Mahdi, in which which place to go to save our iman and to give Islam, and have a rise and help in the rise and the renaissance of Islam. So, the Prophet told us for a reason, even though no one person's interpretation may be perfect, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the only one who ultimately knows. But we're going to make an attempt and we're going to make a collaborative attempt. And so I'm going to ask you to participate with me to look at what I'm saying and maybe bring me other sayings of the Prophet that fit in this puzzle, that fit in, you know, the different pieces. Where, how do they fit? And so <clears throat> let's make this collaborative. Without collaboration, it's, 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 it's not much use, you know. <clears throat> and so uh, I want all my very, very smarter than me brothers and sisters out there to 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 kind of like fill in the puzzles where I am missing them. But we're going to look at some sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. Then we're going to look at the map. And then we're going to talk about the Malhama and Dajjal and the relationship between the Dajjal and Malhama. And over here I have to make thing, one thing very clear. The Prophet said ﷺ, the, the Dajjal will come from the east. And so, even though we have all the, you know, you could say the intellectual invasion, the intellectual imperialism, and uh, the military imperialism, the cultural imperialism, all of that right now is coming from the West. But this will very soon change. And this map that I'm about to show you will make that very clear. So, inshallah ta'ala, let's go ahead and look at the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. Just very quickly, the Prophet said ﷺ, okay, Dajjal, يَتَّبْعُوا Dajjal مِنَ الْيَحُودِ Right? Asfahan, right? سَبْعُونَ أَعْلَافٍ عَلَيْهِمْ طِيَا لِسَا Right? So, Dajjal would be followed by 70,000 uh, soldiers from Asfahan, okay, and they would be wearing Persian shawls. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you can look this up. I think I've talked about this in one of my other videos, but, you know, they do have Iranian shawls that, that the specific uh, design that Iranian Jews wear, and so they will be uh, wearing that, right? So, there is other ahadith about the Jal and Asfahan. So, now we have to look at, we're going to look at Asfahan in a little bit. Now, another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, over here, the Prophet talks about the um, uh, Dajjal coming out from Iraq, from the area of Iraq. In another hadith, يَخُولُ بَيْنَ sham wal Iraq. In another hadith, the Prophet says, ﷺ, that Dajjal will come out from a place that is between Sham, meaning uh, Syria, all of Syria, that includes Israel, uh, um, from Syria between Syria and Iraq, and uh, and then you also have 
the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu very interesting, that the Messenger of Allah said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dajjal will emerge in a land in the east called Khurasan. Okay? Inna Dajjala yakhrujuna min al-ard bil mashriq yuqalu laha Khurasan. Okay? <coughs> and so, let's look at these maps and let's try to understand what is going on. Okay? And so, the first one I want to show you that I'm going to focus on is the map of Khurasan. So you can look at Khurasan here. It is actually the area, Khurasan al Buzurg, as they used to call it, because it's it's a Farsi, uh, you know, it's the people of Faris. So the land of Iran and the mountains to the uh, uh, east of Iran, this area, okay? Sind, what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, called, what the Prophet called Sind is actually majority of what is Pakistan. Khurasan is the, is, the, is the area of, you know, you could say the area of Uzbekistan to Afghanistan, parts of Pakistan, this whole area, all where the Satans are, so to say. And this could, uh, inshallah ta'ala, in the future become a big economic block. All the, the Satans, right? Uh, even up to uh, Kazakhstan and Chechnya and Dagestan and all of this area, Allahu A'lam. Anyway, so, but the 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 Khuras, Khurasan is where the Jal will come out from Khurasan, but also the army of the Mahdi will come out from Khurasan. Even some scholars will say maybe even the Mahdi himself will come out from Khurasan, which to me is uh, we will see, but it doesn't seem correct to me yet. Okay, so anyway, but the army of the people that want to help. The Mahdi, they will come from Khurasan. يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْخُرَسَانِ رَعْيَةُ السُّودِ The Prophet said, وسلم, So you have this area that is called Khurasan. And the Dajjal will come out from Khurasan, the Prophet said. So let's try to understand what's happening here. Let's look at uh, another uh, map. You Over here you can also see where Khurasan is, right? And uh, this also, this map also shows us where Khurasan is, okay? And uh, then you have, of course, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu about now here. Now, if you look over here, you'll see Iran and where Asfahan is. Asfahan is right in the center of, uh, right in the center of Iran. And Asfahan is really close to Tehran, which is the capital. Okay, so it's right in the center of Iran. And so this center of Iran is where that army of Dajjal will, will be. Now it doesn't say the Jal will come out of Asfahan, but that that the Jal will be followed by so many of the people of uh, of the Yehud in Asfahan. The Yehud will be in Asfahan, and more than they are now. Okay, so this is very key to understand. There will be more Yehud in Asfahan than they are now. Okay. Then <clears throat> you have uh, the map of Arabia that I want to show you. Which is the important point here I want to show you is when the Prophet was talk, saying the Jal will come from the east, east of where? East of Medina. Okay? So you have uh, a lot of these lands uh, like Iraq, the Khurasan, Iran. If you see all of these areas that the Prophet was mentioning and relates to the Jal is all together. Everything from where the Prophet says, Khilal uh, uh, Sham wal Iraq between uh, Sham meaning Syria and Iraq so between from there right so that's like the one end the Prophet mentioned all the way to Khurasan he mentioned different locations within this so Asfahan's mentioned Iraq is mentioned right so and, and the general location he will come from the east is mentioned so you see how this is all interconnected everything from Khurasan to the edges of what is Sham today, this whole area will be occupied by the Jal. Now, I want to ask you, does this remind you of a certain map that people are trying to make? Does this remind you? It is an extension. It is an extension of what it would generally be called the Greater Israel, right? The Greater Israel from taking over Syria, Iraq, all the way till, and then uh, parts of Egypt they want to take over. So this, this whole area will be taken over. Now, how will this be taken over? 
how will this be like how will this be taken over now uh remember uh the prophet talked about the jal coming from all these places um is the prophet talking about a certain person or is the prophet talking about a certain uh you could say fitan the fitna of the jal now remember there is masihu dajjal which is the person masihu dajjal is the person and there is the fitna of dajjal the fitna of dajjal is different from the masihu dajjal masihu dajjal is the person fitna is always a social phenomenon and in general whenever the prophet mostly talked about dajjal he was talking about the fitna of dajjal he was talking about the corruption that he will cause and the ahadith about the masihu dajjal specifically relate to the time during the time of the mahdi and till the time of isa alayhi salatu wasalam who will kill him but when you look at all the things of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam together it seems to point out that the fitna of dajjal will be there before and I'll clarify this to you in this way and this will make a, inshallah a little bit more sense and that is the fitna will be there right the chaos is there the corruption is there the wars are there the turmoil is there all this crazy thing is happening and then this fitna throws up a person a leader in the chaos of everything in the chaos of war in the chaos of destruction in the chaos of lives being lost here comes a savior to save you from from the destruction the mass destruction that's happening and he is going to be one that's going to say i'm going to bring peace forget about this war and he's going to and then what's going to happen people and if you re- read the my lecture about why people will leave medina now it will become a little bit clear see there will be so much mass destruction israel will be established then israel will have bring the opportunities or the greater israel will bring the opportunities and people will be leaving medina for these opportunities they will go to syria they would go to yemen they would go to different places of the world outside arabia because arabia would have been devastated and in other parts of the world in the arab world would have been devastated by the malhama okay <clears throat> so what happens turkey is demis- devastated you know remember in the hadith the prophet even comes to medina so this area of arabia is devastated is taken over hajj according to one saying of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been stopped so in this time after so much devastation the only place where there's opportunities where the economy is growing is is that the is you have to work under the you basically the the arabs and the muslims they'll become labor workers for the state of israel they'll become cheap labor you know they'll become cheap labor and to have any opportunity and to have any chances of survival a lot of people say well we have to go and we have to work and since they will extend first to greater israel which is their dream and then they'll say wait we can even extend more because they'll have the power to do that and they will come all the way close to medina they will even conquer turkey and uh, then they will have and it's possible that nato will take turkey because uh, in all of this mess a lot of things will happen and so uh or whatever nato like alliances might be there at that time but allah alam so all of this will be there and the muslims will leave hijaz for the opportunities they will have and and then as uh greater israel is trying to extend it'll hit a wall and that wall is going to be khorasan and that's going to be a difficult that's going to be a difficult wall for it to crack and in fact it won't probably crack okay and then what happens is that as the people are in dunya and they care now about because after this devastation they're given the opportunity of dunya okay so just keep this in mind and what is the main theme of sulkahaf the main theme of sulkahaf is materialism the main theme of sulkahaf the main theme the main theme the main theme the main theme of sulkahaf is materialism don't buy into zinatul hajj the one of the most common terms one of the most common terms that relate to the word the idea of materialism it's the kahf is what zinatul hayatud dunya 
right zinatul hayat ad dunya zinatul hayat you know fa la'allaka ba'khiu nafsaka فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيُ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَا إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَىٰ الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا Right? So this zina, this word zina is used in Sutul Kahf. It's just, what is zina? Something that looks beautiful on the outside. It's just glittery on the outside. It's, it's, it's a fraud. Right? It's deception. Zina. الْمَالُ وَالْبَنُونَ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا So this, you know, this idea of zina, this is the main theme of Sutul Kahf. If you read all of Sutul Kahf, the main thing is don't fall for what is apparent. Don't fall for the material world. There are causes outside this. And so, ha having said that, let's go back. So, people will leave Medina. Okay? So, here is Medina. And people are going to go to Iraq. People are going to go to Syria. People are going to go to Iran. Why? Because after the devastation, this is where the opportunities will be. After the devastation of the Muslim world, this is where the opportunities will be. Because the the companies of greater Israel, they will be established in these areas, in these lands, and they will be bringing opportunity for the people. And the people will go and join that alliance and basically will be equal to, will be equal to selling your soul. Will be equal to selling your soul. And so... And then, then in this process where, you know, Muslims will leave Medina and everything and Jerusalem will become the great empire, the new empire of the world. The world maps will be changed. The borders of greater Israel will include uh, a lot of these areas. But then there will be an uprising in Syria. There will be uprising in different areas. And this is why the Mahdi will come from uh, Medina, Medina going towards Mecca and then his army will go towards Syria but there will be good Muslims in Syria in fact the two lands and I want to share with this with you the two lands that the Prophet praised the most for their Iman is Yemen and Syria and it's interesting because Yemen is on top of Mecca and Medina and uh, sorry, Yem uh, Syria is on top of Mecca and Medina and Yemen is on the bottom of Mecca and Medina so these two lands are kind of like protectors in, on the top and the bottom of Mecca and Medina, okay? And so, Muslims will leave and go and join hands with... Now, what will be happening in the meantime? In the meantime, what will be happening is, if we look at this uh, map of... Uh, you can see Asfahan here, okay? This is also going to be a main place where the army of the greater Israel will be in Iran, okay? Because... You can see already, okay, that how much they want to get to Iran, how badly they want to get to Iran. So what is it that they really want and what will ha become of Shia Islam at that time is going to be a very interesting phenomenon that will be happening. But over here, I want to share with you this area, Khorasan, right? This is the area... Because, you know, wherever there is the disease, with it comes the cure, you could say. So all of this land, almost from Turkey, because Turkey will be conquered eventually. And now you can see probably why, because it's all connected. Turkey, Iraq, Iran, right? Uh, Syria. You know, when they have the power, they'll even go beyond their previous greater Israel. Okay? And and, and you'll see this. And and then there will be a opportunity in this land of Khorasan. And Khorasan is just, you could say, at a clashing point of this uh, land of uh, of uh, the of the Greater Israel, you could say, or the land of Dajjal. Okay, and I'm not saying Greater Israel is necessarily Dajjal, but this is what it seems like. And what it seems like, based upon Surah Al-Kahf, is that people, Muslims, will leave uh, and and sell themselves out for dunya. If you read Surah Al-Kahf, this is what it seems like, particularly. Uh, if you read certain, and inshallah we can do a dars on that where it makes this clear, where it's, it's it, the focus on, like the man in the garden, for example, right? He, he is just after, he, he, and, and people after this devastation, their iman and their faith will become very, very weak, right? And, and they'll be like, I'm just looking for opportunity. I'm just looking for opportunity. And this, you can see this happening after wars, right? People after devastation of wars, they become a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times even more materialistic because when they finally get that opportunity, right, they just grab onto it. And a lot of Muslims, unfortunately, will fall for that. 
And so anyway, I just wanted to say uh, maybe to some degree what is very obvious, but I wanted to lay it out in a map and for everyone to be able to see and think about. And so if you look at this map, everything from Turkey to Syria to Iraq to Iran, all the way to Khorasan will be occupied. And Jazakumullah Khairan, please like, subscribe, share. Jazakumullah Khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah Khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm <laughs>